Good evening. Am I audible? Okay. What we did in last class? Abina? Yes, sir. Just tell me. Okay, okay. Oscillation kinetic theory of gas. Sir, I have a doubt, sir. Yes, tell me. Sir, can you please uh, explain the working of the hydraulic lift once again, sir? I was studying it yesterday and I got confused. Okay, okay. It is based on Pascal's law. For Pascal's law, I had just defined you two different statements. One was at same horizontal level, pressure will be seen in all different direction. Suppose in a particular liquid, this is at any particular level. So pressure will be along this direction, this direction, this direction. In all different direction, pressure will be same. At same depth for liquid at rest. Next statement is, for enclosed liquid in a vessel, if it is incompressible, if you exert pressure at any one end, it will equally distribute or dissipate at other end without changing its value. On the basis of this statement, In this part, in a particular tube, we have smaller cross-section area at this end and larger cross-section area at this end. Suppose there is piston at this point and there is another piston at this point. So according to Pascal's law, if you exert force at this end, let's say F1, having area of cross-section A1, so it will generate a pressure F by A. Just assume this particular liquid to be incompressible. So if you exert pressure at any one end, it will generate same pressure at the other end. So force is F2 and area of cross section A2. So pressure at this end will be forced by area of cross section. According to Pascal's law, P1 and P2 must be equal to each other. So just equate it. F1 by A1 is equals to F2 by A2. Abhina, is it clear? Yes, sir. Now on the basis of this part, you'll be given F1 or F2, A1 and A2, and you'll have to calculate the unknown part related to this one. Just one minute. Let's see question number 10th, first part of it. A car lift 
compressed air exert a force F1 on a smaller piston having radius 5 cm. And pressure at the other end, second radius, 15 centimeter. If the mass of car to be lifted is 1350 kg, find F1. So use the above relation and try to solve F1 related to that part. You'll get your answer. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Clear, sir. <clears throat> Let me start with thermodynamics, okay? So, next is thermodynamics. <clears throat> In this part, first we have different thermodynamical process. So you'll be asked to define different thermodynamical process. First question will be, define thermodynamical process such as isobaric, isochoric, isothermal or adiabatic. Or there will be question on application of these different process, like what will happen to the air of or the temperature of air ejecting on bursting of tire or bursting of balloon. Similarly, why tire of wheel? or a vehicle on a long drive got burst. Similarly, how pressure will work? These different questions on the basis of application of these different process you'll be asked. I had explained you these different phenomena related to isobaric, isochoric, isothermal, and adiabatic term. Next question will be to calculate or derive work done during isothermal process or adiabatic process. So for isothermal part, it was work done is equals to N R T L N V final by V initial. But in case of adiabatic process, when delta Q is zero, you may use first law. D U is equals to this plus this since D Q is zero. So amount of work done will be just negative of internal energy. Now put the formula or write the formula related to this internal energy. So you'll get NCV dt divided by gamma minus one. You'll get expression of work done from this part. Next question will be on the basis of define CP and CV. Why CP is greater than CV and derive a relation between these two parts. I'd explain you these two terms. CP is molar specific heat at constant pressure and CV is molar specific heat at constant volume. So their relation is CP minus CV is equals to R. That is Mayor's relation. You'll be asked to derive this particular part. Next, 
why CP is greater than CD? Atif, do you have any idea why CP is greater than CV? I'll explain you. Riba, could you explain why CP is greater than CV? You will say at constant pressure, the amount of heat supplied to the system is utilized only in changing internal energy. But at constant pressure, the amount of heat supplied is utilized in <clears throat> changing internal energy as well as doing work. So to get same amount of internal energy for isobaric process, heat supplied should be greater as compared to internal as compared to iso isochoric process. That's why CP is greater than CD. Next question will be, on the base of relation between slope of adiabatic and isothermal, slope of adiabatic is equals to gamma times slope of isothermal. So we can say adiabatic curve is more steeper as compared to isothermal part. Any doubt up to this part in these different questions? No, sir. Riba? Okay, now let me define you. <clears throat> You'll be asked in two different cases, that is one for expansion and other for compression. So will there be any difference in these two different process? Let me define you. In case of expansion, Graph will be like this. But in case of compression, graph will be like this. So it will be along this direction. Pressure versus volume. This is for isobaric. This is for isothermal. And this is adiabatic isochoric. But in case of compression, the graph will be like this. Isochoric, isobaric. In these two terms, which will be adiabatic and which will be isothermal. Abhinav, could you explain? The above one or the below one? Let me define you how to just, just draw slow on these two different curves from initial point.
So in this part, slope of this particular line is from this point to this point, but slope of this line is from this point to this point. So we can analyze from this part, adiabatic curve is more steeper as compared to isothermal curve. That's why adiabatic is below as compared to isothermal. Similarly, if you have to calculate stiffness, just draw a tangent to these two different curves at their initial point. So it will be like this. So inclination of these two lines with respect to horizontal, will be this in which of these two in these or in these two different curve which is or which curve has more stiffness the upper one or the below one Avina, whose inclination is more the above one or the below one below one sir below one Oh, above one, sir. Above one. So more the inclination of curve, it will be more steeper and it will be adiabatic. So it means this will be adiabatic and this will be for isothermal. Atif, any doubt? No, sir. Now, from this part, you'll be asked to define work done. Work done is nothing but area under the graph. So just draw a curve like this to get shaded region. And similarly in this part to get shaded region. So in expansion, we can say work done is maximum in isobatic, then isothermal, and then adiabatic, and minimum or zero in isochoric process. But while compression, in this part, work done is maximum in adiabatic, then isothermal, and least in isobatic process. So work done, Q, then T, and then Atif, any doubt? No, sir. Okay, next question will be on the base of equation of equation of state. Let me define you different equation of state. According to ideal gas equation, PV is equals to nRT. So in case of first, isobaric, second, isochoric, third, isothermal, and fourth, adiabatic, which is exceptional to this particular equation of state. So for isobaric part, P is constant, so volume and temperature is directly proportional. So V1 over T1 is equals to V2 over T2. Next, for isochoric, that is a volume constant, pressure and temperature will be directly proportional. So P1 upon T1 should be equals to P2 over T2. In third part for isothermal, temperature is constant, so pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So P1, V1 is equals to P2, V2. But in case of adiabatic process, we have different term. First is <clears throat> for pressure and volume, it will be P, V to the power gamma equals to P, V to the power gamma between P and V. Second between temperature and volume, it will be T V to the power gamma minus one equals to T V to the power gamma minus one. And third, between pressure and temperature, it will be T one to the power gamma 
divide by P1 to the power gamma minus one equals to T2 to the power gamma divided by P2 to the power gamma minus one. Let me define a question related to these different equation of state. Riba, any doubt up to this part? Okay. And ideal gas initially having P V expands to twice its volume first at very slow rate and second at very fast. Find P final in each. Let me define you how to solve this part. In this term, we have two different process. One is a process which is very slow, and the next is very fast. So if a process is changing at very slow rate, it will be termed as quasi-static process, and this will be isothermal in nature, that is, delta t equals to zero. But if a process is very fast, then it will be adiabatic. So we may write P1 or initial pressure we have P, V1 initial volume we have V, P2 we have to calculate V2 is two times of V. Now we have two different processes in this part. One is very slow and the other is at very fast. So use the equation of state related to each different process and try to find P2. Let's say this gas is monoatomic. Try to solve everyone. You may use for delta t equals to zero, 
P1 V1 is equals to P2 V2. Just substitute the value of Russell term and try to find P2. In case of adiabatic, delta IQ is equals to zero. P1 V1 to the power gamma equals to P2 V2 to the power gamma. In this part, we have monoatomic gas. So its degree of freedom will be three and gamma will be five by three. Just put all the values and simplify it. Atif, you got any answer? I'm doing so. Okay. Good, Atif. Try to solve the second part. In the first part, if you substitute the values, P1 is P, V1 is V, P2 we have to calculate and V2 is two times of P. So P2 will be equals to PV divided by two times of V, V and V will cancel out. So P2 is equals to P by two. In second part, P1 is P, V1 is V to the power gamma. P2 we have to calculate and V2 is two times of V to the power gamma. Just move this term to left side. So P2 is equals to P, V by two times of V to the power gamma. V and V will cancel out, so we're left with P, divide by two to the power gamma and gamma is five by three. So this will be a fine answer. Now from this part, you will be asked to define relation between these two different process or simply compare these different process. First, in terms of isothermal and second, in terms of adiabatic, which is more for isothermal part or for iodiabatic part. 
Atef? Any idea? Sir, isothermal. Good. As this is expansion of gas and in expansion part, I'll explain you in this part. If you have same initial state, so finally, for isothermal, there will be small decrease in pressure as compared to adiabatic part. Also from this calculation, you can say, two to the power five by three will be more as compared to two to the power one. Hence, this pressure will be more as compared to this one. Pressure for isothermal part will be greater as compared to adiabatic part. Umar, is it clear? Okay. Let me just write it down. So you don't need to calculate two raised to five by three. No need to calculate. Okay, next question will be on the basis of this equation of state. Let me just if helium at 15 degrees Celsius expand suddenly to eight times initial volume find final temperature <coughs> in this part we have helium gas initially at 15 degrees celsius expand suddenly to eight times its initial volume. It means helium is monoatomic. So degree of freedom will be three and gamma will be five by three for this part. Initial temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. So just convert this into Kelvin. So it will be 273 plus 15, so it will be 288 Kelvin. Volume, let's say V, expands abruptly to eight times its initial volume. We have to calculate TB. So first is, we have to define the process in this part. Is it isobaric, isochoric, isothermal, or adiabatic? Abhinav? Which process will be in this part? Just see, in this part, gas is expanding all of a sudden. It means it will be adiabatic in nature. Now for adiabatic part, equation of state for temperature and volume, it will be T1 V1 to the power gamma minus one equals to T2 V2 to the power gamma minus one. Use this relation and try to find T2. Atif, is it clear? 
T1V1 to the power gamma minus 1 is equals to T2V2 to the power gamma minus 1. Just put all the values and try to simplify it. Abhinav, you got any answer? We have mainly four different processes. First is isobaric, in which pressure is constant. <clears throat> Second is isochoric, volume is constant. Third is isothermal, temperature is constant. And fourth is adiabatic, heat is constant. In this part, gas initially at this stand, this temperature, expands all of a sudden to become eight times of its initial volume. So you will say volume is changing. On changing volume, all of a sudden, particles move up abruptly to all different sites to acquire that much eight times of volume. In this condition, pressure will also change consequently and also temperature. So this entire process pressure, volume, and temperature will change without any supply or ejection of heat from that particular system. That's why all of a sudden process is termed as adiabatic in nature. Atif, is it clear? Yes, sir. So we have to calculate T2. T2 is equals to T1. V1 divided by V2 to the power gamma minus 1. T1 we have 288. V1 is V and V2 is 8 times V to the power gamma minus 1. So V and V will cancel out. So you'll get 288. 1 by 8 to the power 5 by 3 minus 1. So it will become 2 by 3. So you may write it as 
1 by 8 as 2 to the power 3 and further raised to 2 by 3. So 3 and 3 will cancel out. So you'll get 288 multiplied by 1 by 2 squared. So it will become 1 by 4. 4 into 7, 28 and 4 into 2, Kelvin. So this will be your final temperature in terms of Kelvin. If you have to calculate in degrees Celsius, it will be minus 201 degrees Celsius. Umar, is it clear? You all have written up to this part. Yes. Okay. This is all, all about this entire thermodynamical process. Next question will be on the basis of efficiency of heat engine. Eta is equals to work done divided by heat absorbed, which is equals to Q1 minus Q2 divided by Q1, which is equals to 1 minus Q2 by Q1, or 1 minus T2 by T1. You will be asked to convert this expression into this part. I had explained you how to convert this relation into this form using the concept of adiabatic process and different phaser diagram related to mechanism of heat engine. Next question will be on numerical part related to this part. In your final exam, I think there will be three or four numerical based question. The rest of the thing will be theoretical, one word, these question, conceptual part. Next question in this, to define laws, that is, you'll be asked to define zeroth law, first law, or simply statement for second law, that is Kelvin statement or Clausius statement. Further, you'll be asked to define refrigerator. And last part, how the temperature of room would increase or why temperature of room would increase if the door of fridge is kept open in an isolated room. So only these different questions will be asked from this part. Any more doubt to this part from this chapter? Yes. Abhinav, any doubt? No, sir. Okay. Next is in thermal properties of matter. First is related to expansion. So in expansion part, first thing will be relation between alpha, beta, and gamma. That is different coefficient of linear expansion. Abhinav, just tell me relation between these different coefficient of expansion.
let me define you easy ways to learn with this particular part. Alpha is one dimension, so it will be alpha by one. Beta is two dimensional, so it will be beta by two. And gamma is three dimensional, so it will be gamma by three. You may write this particular part as alpha is two, beta is two, gamma. One is two, two is two, three. You may write this particular expression by taking LCM of its denominator as six alpha, three beta, or two gamma. Next will be on the base of expansion. <clears throat> Suppose for expansion long length, it will be L naught one plus alpha times delta T. For area, it will be A naught one plus beta times delta t and for volume it will be v naught times one plus gamma delta t and density it will be rho naught times one minus gamma delta t let me just show you just one minute Let's see question number 11. Blacksmith fixes iron ring on a rim of wooden wheel of a bullock card. The diameter of rim and iron ring are 5.243 and 5.231 meters respectively at 27 degrees Celsius. To what temperature should the ring be heated so as to fit the rim on the wheel? Given alpha is 1.2 10 to the power minus 50, minus 5 degrees Celsius. In this part, we had suppose. This is wooden wheel of a bullock car. And next is iron ring. Having slightly smaller diameter at 27, 27 degrees Celsius. So it has to put over this particular wooden V exactly. Diameter of this ring initially is 5.231 meter and diameter over which it has to be placed or fixed as 5.243 meter. Coefficient of expansion is 1.2 into 10 to the power minus five per degree Celsius and initial temperature is 27 degrees Celsius. We have to calculate final temperature. So using formula for linear expansion, we are considering diameter of this particular ring to be in one dimension. So it has to be increased to this much amount of length. So according to the above expression, or related to this formula, L is equals to L naught one plus alpha delta T. This is initial diameter, which, is has, which has to be expand to finally this point. So we may write alpha is equals to delta D divided by D naught times delta T 
Further, delta t is equals to delta d divided by alpha d naught. Now substitute all the values and you will get your answer. Delta t is final temperature minus initial temperature. Delta d is difference between these two parameters. That is 5.243 minus 5.231. So it will be 0 0.01 meter. Divide by initial diameter, 5.231, multiplied by alpha, 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 5. Just simplify this part and you'll get your answer. Umar, is it clear? Atif, any doubt? Next question related to this concept is You see question number two or part. Why a small gap is left between the re iron rails of a railway track? Also question number third, state zero law of thermodynamics. Atif, could you explain why we left some gap at the junction or at joint between any two rail on railway track? Sorry, sir, can you repeat the question? Why there is some gap left in between two adjacent rail and railway track? because uh, upon like in hot days they'll expand so the gap is there good since due to seasonal change there will be expansion and compression so the left gap may be filled in summer that's why there will be gap in between two different trail and railway track so that in expansion there will not there will they would not overlap or over go over one another due to expansion of one one part and another part. Next is you will be asked to define about triple point. Let me just explain you what do you mean by triple point. Suppose if you have to explain melting point and boiling point, you will say the temperature at which ice start melting at constant pressure that is one atm. Similarly, boiling point it is the temperature at which liquid or water start boiling at one atmospheric pressure. So next question is. Will there be any effect of pressure on melting point, boiling point, freezing point? Let me define you. Suppose this is pressure versus temperature. And we have ice. So first, I'm just trying to change pressure so that it will remain in ice up to a particular point. Similarly, I'm changing pressure of water so that it will remain in water. And further, in case of vapor, I'm trying to remain vapor in its own state by changing pressure. 
So you'll get a curve like this. So at this point, which is 273.16 Kelvin or 0 0.01 degrees Celsius. And pressure for this is 4.58 mm of Hg. If you calculate in terms of pressure, it will be about 611.2 Pascal. At this pressure and temperature, all three state of water coexist together. This is called triple point. Atif, is it clear? Yes. So we can say at particular temperature and pressure, if all three states of matter coexist together. This is called triple point. Just remember, in case of water, it will be 611.2 Pascal pressure and temperature will be 0 0.01 degrees Celsius, or in terms of Kelvin, it will be 273.16 Kelvin. Abhinav, any doubt? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Next question will be anomalous behavior of water. According to the formula of expansion, you will say on increasing temperature, dimension of body will increase and consequently, crowdness of particle, that is density, will decrease. But there is exception in case of water for a particular range of temperature, that is, between zero degrees Celsius to four degrees Celsius. If you increase temperature from zero to four, with rise in temperature, volume start decreasing and density start increasing. This is just opposite in behavior as compared to the formula. This peculiar behavior is called anomalous behavior of water. So if you plot graph for this part, it will be in case of volume. Minimum volume will be at this point, four degrees Celsius. And similarly, if you plot for density, it will be maximum density at four degrees Celsius. Density, volume versus temperature versus temperature. Umar, any doubt? Okay. Next is, you may just write it down, triple point.
अभिनव दान आठ मिनट सर मेकिंग द ग्राफ ओके डन सर next is <clears throat> you will be asked to define regulation first what do you mean by this part and what will be its application suppose you are on surface of ice and trying to move on skateboard so question will be how you will be able to slide over ice easily why there is minimum friction on sliding over ice let me define you in this condition due to weight of this individual there will be some pressure exerted at its bottom and according to the relation pressure and temperature is directly proportional to each other so with increase in pressure due to weight of this individual temperature just below it also increases and this temperature rise will responsible to melt some amount of ice into water now water below this particular skateboard will act as lubricating agent and will help in sliding over this particular surface so friction in between the, these two term will be minimum or least now if this particular individual has moved some distance towards this point so on shifting from one point to another the melted ice due to its surrounding temperature again refreezes into ice so this entire process from melting of ice into water and then refreezing of water into ice due to its surrounding temperature is called regelation atif is it clear abina is it clear yes sir let me define you you will say due to increase in pressure temperature also increases it will cause to melt some amount of ice into water again due to surrounding ice or temperature melted water refreezes this entire process is called
Titulation. We may define related to this process in some other way also. Suppose you have ice block. which is placed over suppose any block now if wire hanged from any weight is placed over it. So due to this weight, it will exert some pressure at this line and this pressure will increase its temperature below it. So some amount of ice will melt and this particular pin or string move slightly downward. And this process will continue till it move from one end to another. Now on moving slightly downward, water or melted water present above it again refreezes due to temperature of surrounding. And this process continues till this string moves from one end to another without splitting this entire block. This is again regulation. Atif, is it clear? Yes. So this is all about this expansion part and some related term. Next is calorimetry. You'll be asked numerical in this. First, in waterfall, water present at the lowest level or bed of waterfall will have slightly greater temperature as compared to the upper water. Why? You'll say, since this is highest point from which water is falling down in waterfall up to this bottom. So due to its falling from sufficiently large height, potential energy of water will decrease. Suppose having at this much enormous height, it will have initially potential energy, MGH. On falling down to its bottom, this entire energy would convert into two different parts. First, to provide kinetic energy to move from one point to another and next to provide change in temperature. So some amount of this energy would convert into changing temperature of this particular water at the bottom point. So you will say delta E is equals to mass times specific heat times delta T. So you calculate delta T is equals to amount of energy that has utilized in changing temperature divided by mass of water present on it, specific heat. So this much will be a rise in temperature on falling down. 
Abhinav, is it clear why there is change in temperature? Next, in calorimetry, heat will cause to change two different things. First, to change the temperature, and second, to change the state. Heat which causes to change temperature is specific heat. And heat which causes to change state is latent heat. So for a specific heat, it will be Q is equals to mass of substance, specific heat constant times change in temperature. For latent heat, it will be Q is equals to mass of substance times latent heat constant, whether it will be for fusion, so it will be latent heat of fusion, whether it will be for vaporization, so it will be latent heat of vaporization. Let me give you a question related to this part. If ten gram water is at ten degrees Celsius, find amount of heat released and changing to ice at minus 20 degrees Celsius. So for any different problem, first try to draw graph related to the process. So in this part, we have initially water at plus 10 degrees Celsius. So it will change its temperature from plus 10 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius water. Further, from zero degrees Celsius water, it will freeze into ice. And further, it will decrease its temperature to minus 20 degrees Celsius up to this part. So initially, it is at this point, plus 10 degrees Celsius. So on going from this point to this point, it will evolve Q1 amount of heat due to change in its temperature. So we can call it as specific heat. Further, on moving from this point to this point, it will be latent heat since state of water is changing into ice. So it will be Q2. And further from this point to this point, temperature is changing from zero degrees Celsius to minus 20 degrees Celsius. So it will be again specific heat Q3. So according to the formula, Qn is mass of water, specific heat capacity of water, change in temperature, 10 minus zero. So we have mass of water, 10 gram. Specific heat capacity of water is one calorie per gram per Kelvin. Similarly, Q2, which is latent heat of fusion. So mass of water multiplied by latent heat of fusion constant. For ice, it will be 80 calorie per gram. And third, to change its temperature from zero